Okay guys, Big Slick here and today we're going to tackle upgrading an old compact C501NR laptop. Vintage was March of 2007 when I purchased the machine, so it's almost 10 years old. It came with a Celeron M430 1.7 GHz CPU. The machine is actually still largely fitting my needs which is pretty basic for what I'm doing with this machine but the CPU is starting to have trouble playing back videos such as on YouTube and that and I did a little research and I found that in theory you can upgrade to another processor that may improve uh, the machine about 17 uh, percent it's a core solo T1350 it's going to require largely a complete disassembly of the laptop in order to make the upgrade. I only paid $4.75 for the CPU, so it's a cheap upgrade if it gets the job done. And it kind of will be a fun project to give it a shot. So let's, let's get going. Okay, I haven't tore one of these apart before, at least not completely. I have other laptops but not this machine so I'll keep shooting the video but I'll probably edit it in order to cut out a lot of the wasted trial and error that I'm doing I'm trying to only tear it apart to the extent necessary to get the CPU out I know we'll have to start with pulling the battery so batteries out and I did take benchmarks using CPU ID before I uh, am starting this so I will have a before and after using the benchmarking of CPU ID so we'll find out how much improvement we actually made Okay, I had to get the drill and drill out this screw, this screw right here on the keyboard, and this one. The screw heads were just absolutely junk. They wouldn't give, and there was really no choice then to drill them out. The bottom still wasn't coming off, so that's why I think I need to take this keyboard out. And I did find one screw here, which may be holding the bottom on. 
and there's another screw down here so we pick that one out too Okay, those last two screws underneath the keyboard was what it took to get into here. So now we're into here and we'll see what we have up here by the CPU. Okay, there's two screws over here. Look like they have to come out. Another screw down here. Another screw down here. It's a couple tabs right here. We'll see if we pry those up. Okay, we're into it. We'll have to clean off the goop on this heat sink, put some fresh on, pull out the processor. Okay, we cleaned off the uh, heat sink. And now we're going to try to pull up the processor here. looks like you twist this left in order to get this processor up okay there's the old one okay here's the new one oh, darn thing actually looks brand new Okay, so now we'll put some heat sink paste on the heat sink and pop it back in. Okay four of these silver colored screws to go in and this tiny black screw has to go back in okay that's all back in so now we'll start reassembling it okay while I'm in here I took up the wire, wireless card which just came out with two screws I'm going to replace the CMOS battery being that it's 10 years old it's a good time to do that project now too 
Okay, it's a good thing that I decided to change this CMOS battery because when you test it on an actual battery tester that puts a load on it, as you can see, it's basically dead. This thing has no juice whatsoever to it. I'll show you another new one, that way you get a comparison here. Okay, here's another brand new one. I bought a five pack of these you'll see you'll get quite there you go see you're getting over eight mils of current there and on the old one it had none here was that old one again make sure we get a good solid connection on this yep nothing that was dead as a doornail okay so we powered it back up I didn't even finish assembling it all the way just in case there was a problem and it's powering up fine obviously I had a CMOS error message because I changed the battery and the CPU changed so I'll have to enter the new date and time but as you see it is recognizing the T1350 processor so that's a good sign so I'll go ahead and set the factory default and go from there and then we'll fire it back up one thing I will have to do down here right now as you see I have this top panel off because I had to drill out these two screws here because the heads were stripped so what I'll have to do, I wanted to make sure that the keyboard was still going to work fine. So once I give it a thorough testing, I'm going to have to put some Joke Boy Weld, or otherwise known as JB Weld, on here in order to keep this keyboard from flopping a tiny bit on this side. I'm not worried about having to remove it again because, honestly, this machine's not worth fixing again if I would need any other problems. So once I'm sure it's fine, I'll put this back cover on, Joke Boy weld this, and we'll be good to go. Okay, I checked the keyboard with this keyboard checker website, keyboardtester.com. Keyboard's working fine, the trackpad's working fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the JB weld, the Joke Boy weld, on those two sides of the keyboard screw tabs there and once that sets up good I'll pop that top cover on and we'll call it a project and I'll show you the final uh, CPU scores okay so got her all back together including the bezel on top doing a quick boot up here I gave it a good cleaning too, took all the stickers off, had to take the Celeron sticker off because there's no longer a Celeron in there. We wouldn't want to mislabel the product as they say. So we got the desktop almost ready there. I can say that it feels a slightly snappier and I've already actually done a benchmark and I can say that the results are a little disappointing. It's probably closer to half of the improvement of what I expected, at least according to the benchmark for a CPU ID. I'll show you a couple screenshots of how that turned out. But overall, I'll say that, you know, considering it was less than the price of a extra value meal at the local fast food joint, and hey, you know, it's worthwhile.